So in this video, what we'll talk about is three no-code AR tools. So for each, I'll talk about what it can do, so the features available, like face tracking, plane detection, and all that stuff. And second, I'll talk about the future potential, when the glosses come out, what they can do. And third, which is tied to this, I'll talk about the platforms where you can share these apps to. So stay tuned till the end if you're curious about all these. So let's start with number one. Can you guess which one this would be? This is a platform owned by one of the biggest companies in the world, which recently uh, reached the trillion dollar mark. It's something I just logged out of a few minutes back. So the number one platform is owned by Facebook and it's called Spark AR. First, what can it do? Well, thanks to Mr. Zuckerberg, it can do face tracking, all kinds of face tracking. It can detect expressions, happy, sad, and all that. So you could add your own AR overlays based on your emotions or facial expressions, pretty cool. These are all for mostly for social AR use cases, which is what uh, is very popular in mobile AR at least. So all those uh, filters that you see, AR filters, AR overlays, for example, tracking your face and putting a tattoo over here or all those kinds of filters and AR games even. If you notice, like you play basketball with your head and all that, that all involves tracking your face and it's an AR application. But apart from face, it also can track the world. So it can do plane detection, 3D object and all that uh, common stuff that we learned in, our, in this channel before. And one of the good things about Spark AR is it has a built-in library of lots of plug and play content. So it has a built-in library of 3D models, which you can use. Facebook has a partnership with Sketchfab here. So all the Sketchfab models, you, there's a direct integration with this tool. So you can get in 3D models, pre-made 3D models, sounds, materials, and all that, which really would fast track a lot of your AR creation process. So that's one good thing about Spark AR. And like I said, it's no code, but if you want to add some code to build something really custom, you could use JavaScript to do that and extend the functionality, but primarily it's a no-code tool. And which platform does it belong to? Obviously, as I mentioned it already, it's Facebook. So once you create the tools in here, you could uh, export it to Facebook or Instagram, which is also owned by Facebook. But you may ask like, this is all uh, mobile AR. It's not really the true futuristic AR that I keep talking about in this channel, right? Where the glasses come on. Yeah, that's true. But it's still a good tool to get your hands dirty and learn what AR creation is like. Learn about 3D models, learn about meshes, adding colors, shaders, and all that stuff. Uh, and using no code. So it's perfect for 3D designers, beginners, all kinds of people. Now, what is the future potential in my opinion of Spark AR? Like where would Spark AR go? So Spark AR is obviously a software owned by Facebook and Facebook is working on true AR glasses. It's no secret. They are doing really well with VR now and their eyes are on AR. They talked about in their last conference, they talked about Project Aria, which is their true AR glasses, which is really in the R&D stage. So probably a 10 year thing. But next year, they were also hinting at announcing uh, smart glasses, not truly AR, but smart glasses in conjunction with Ray-Ban. So clearly Facebook has AR ambitions and Spark AR would be probably their first AR creation tool. And I don't think Spark AR would be the sole creation tool when the true glasses come out. It will probably be coupled with a proper game engine or stuff which you can do to add, create truly immersive experiences, sort of like Reality Combos and Reality Kit for Apple. So yeah. That's what I think where Spark AR would go. Good to learn now, but I doubt it would stand alone as a future AR creation tool. It would be coupled with something more meaty. And so that is Spark AR. Next one, the next tool is, since we were talking about Zuckerberg's company earlier, Facebook, the next tool is kind of related. It's a company which actually refused a big offer from Zuckerberg. I used to say, you know, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, they like to buy out companies which are growing rapidly. They did with Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus. They are acquisition giants. They snatch up, copy, or acquire all these upcoming social media stars. But this guy, uh, Evan Spielberg, might, might have pronounced his last name wrong, but the CEO of Snapchat, he actually refused one of these offers from Facebook. Facebook offered to buy them out, but he actually refused. And you can't really say they're a success story yet because Snap is not as popular as before. They have big AR ambitions, so who knows, maybe they might conquer the hardware world in the next era. You never know, you can't tell about these things. It's too, it's too hard to predict who will be the winner. Uh, again, going off topic, the next tool is Lens Studio by Snap. 
So Snapchat, unlike other companies, they have been a bit more strategic and pragmatic in my opinion. They are, they have released their smart glasses spectacles, multiple versions of it. And just recently they announced the true AR glasses. This is not an overlays, but these are 3D holographic AR glasses in its true sense. And uh, it's not out yet for consumers. It's handed out to developers for them to create their own experiences with at the moment. But this is one of the first entries. I was expecting True Air Glasses to make its debut more uh, later down the decade, but Snapchat already announced theirs. So clearly, they have AR ambitions. And uh, yeah, so going off topic, Lens Studio is Snapchat's own AR creation tool. So, what can it do? Just like Spark AR, you can do wall tracking, face tracking. So, you can detect over 93 points in your face, according to the website. You can detect expressions just like Spark AR. It can do eye tracking, face masks, and unlike Facebook AR, they also have a Snap ML where you can add in your own machine learning models into your AR experiences. Simple example like detect when you're smiling, not smiling, and add text or overlays based on that. And they also have custom shaders to customize the look and feel and the art of the objects. And unlike Facebook, they don't have that integration with like popular 3D tool like Sketchfab, where you can get a lot of pre-made stuff. Um, so yeah, that's missing. But they do have, like Facebook, they use JavaScript for extending if you want to build something really custom. So Lens Studio, like Spark AR, is exclusive to Snapchat, like Spark AR is exclusive to Facebook. So the experiences you create here, you can only distribute it in Snapchat and the AR experience is there. In terms of the future, again, like I mentioned before, Snap Spectacles, their own AR glasses, which will be iterated over and over again over the coming years. So in terms of the future, if you learn this, you could start building AR apps for the Snap Spectacles, which uh, I believe would be released much earlier than the other competitors. Now let's move away from the Snap Facebook saga and all that. Let's go into a different company, Apple, my favorite, which is what this channel is initially about. So Apple, no secret, has huge AR ambitions as well. And as such, they have multiple AR creation tools, not just no code, but they have reality kit, uh, AR kit and all that. I create tutorials for that, those two. But its primary no code tool is called Reality Composer. It's like the PowerPoint for AR. You can create AR experiences without any uh, coding experience. What can it do? Again, similar stuff. It can do world tracking, plane detection, horizontal, vertical, and all that. It can do face tracking for uh, face overlays. But unlike the other two, this has good integration with a coding tool. Reality Composer has a good integration with Reality Kit, which is Apple's framework for creating AR experiences. So you can build really custom experiences combining both Reality Composer, No Code, and Reality Kit together. If you're a designer, 3D artist, don't know, don't want to code, you can use Reality Composer by itself, but if you're a programmer and want more, more customization, there's good integration with Reality Composer. So that's one of the good things about uh, Reality Composer compared to the other two. And which platform? Again, Apple. You could create iOS AR apps with these. And unlike the other two, Spark AR and Lens Studio, this, these are not distributed to social media apps and experiences, but rather the App Store. So future potential with Reality Composer, obviously it would be the Apple glasses I rave about all the time in this channel. So if you know Reality Composer, Reality Kit, combine both those two, that's Apple's future uh, AR creation tool. When the glasses come out, it would be made using these two. In this channel, I have a couple of tutorials on Reality Composer and Apple frameworks. The other two I might slowly start adding in once I learn them. And uh, yeah, check them out if you're interested. And I'll see.